So, good morning, Strata. Wow. Let's try it again. I, I thought we said the state of the data science was strong. Let's try it again. Good morning, Strata. There we go. <laughs> All right. So the thing that we're going to talk, I want to talk today about is analytics and building teams around analytics, building teams around data. For those of you that are playing data bingo today, we will use the word analytics and data a lot, so those should be off the list. Uh, first off, who are we? We're 90 million professionals. Uh, we're the largest professional social network in the world. How many of you are on LinkedIn? All right, who's not and willing to raise their hand? All right, there's a few of you. Don't worry. By the end of today, we can help you out. So we got you covered. Just come to our booth. Really, when it comes down and what we think about analytics is it comes down to our mission statement. Our mission statement is to connect the world's professionals and help make them more successful and productive. What does that mean? It has two essential components with data. Insights. Insights to help improve your, your daily life with per, uh, professional insights. Also, career insights to help you find that dream job, to get better, to keep on progressing. And a lot of times we think of this as somewhat trivial, but think about, keep a lot of this in context of all the recent things that have happened with respect to the global economy, how people have had to change jobs, how people have to find new, new opportunities out there. So let's take a second and talk a little bit about LinkedIn. What does LinkedIn have to do with data? A lot of times I get the question of, you're LinkedIn and you guys do data? You do big data? What, what is that? Why? Well. If we ask the question, how much demand are there for data scientists? Well, we're LinkedIn. We have all these profiles. We've got all this information. We should be able to say that. And you know, to take a line from Hillary's talk, uh, yes, indeed, the state of the data science is indeed strong. How do I know? Well, let's look at the demand. It's, we know that. We're LinkedIn. Here is the demand of how data science goes. On the bottom axis there, you'll see uh, 1970 up through past 2005, where the indicator is. And then the, the y-axis, think of that as the demand. It's, I won't get into the actual definition for this talk. But the thing is, it's skyrocketing. It is just taking off. And that is changing. It's only getting stronger. If you need more evidence, just go out and look at the job board. But we don't have to stop there. Here we are at Strata. You may, some of you may have heard through uh, Pete's talk yesterday about some of the things we can do with the data. How, much of you, how many of you are, how are we interconnected? This is our professional world. How are we interconnected? 529 of us, the, the 790 that we were able to map, are connected to at least one or one or more attendees. 30 are connected to 20 or more. 85 are connected to 10 or more. And 189 of you are connected to five or more. But it doesn't just stop there. Those are just flat statistics. What really gets interesting is when we start to think about how we're structured. And this may be a little bit tough for people to see, but this is the graph of how people at Strata are connected to each other. So some of the things that you'll see there is the, uh, the galaxy of investors, the angels, all huddled there. Uh, here are a lot of the enterprise guys, Cloudera guys. LinkedIn is up here. Uh, O'Reilly is over here. And so one of the things that gets really fascinating to be able to do is start looking at the structure and how are these interact with each other. So getting back to data teams, how did we set up our data team? Well, the first thing we did when we were thinking about building a data team a number of years ago is we looked around. We talked to everyone we could, Google, Yahoo, eBay, you name it. And we found one common theme across everyone. Every data scientist was frustrated that they weren't able to ship their products. How many of you have ever had that thing of going up to a PM and saying, I have this idea, we know it's going to kick ass, and they're like, yeah, it's not on the roadmap. Yeah, oh, you work for Yahoo, huh? Okay. <laughs> you can always tell those guys. <laughs> so what did we do with that? <laughs> you can't be not controversial up here. <laughs> so we did something different. We wanted to try something different. What was that? We made it a top-level product team. We wanted to make it like every other product team, totally encompassing. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. What do we look for in candidates? Our philosophy for talent, would we want to do a startup with you? And by the way, I need to emphasize, talent to us is very different than hiring. 
The first thing for us is, do we want to do a startup with you? Why is that a good criteria? We are going to spend a lot of time together, and we're going to really try to work on hard problems. If you can pass that bar, sure. That seems like a great model. Two, can you knock the socks off of the company in 90 days? As the companies get larger, the ability for each data scientist, engineer, web dev, anybody associated with our team to blow away the company sets the standard and the ethos inside the company of why data is important and why these people must be the people that drive the vision, the strategic mandates, and how to think about the products. And finally, we're a spin out of the PayPal mafia. So what, well, one of the key things is we, have to, we expect you to do amazing things in four to six years. What is amazing to us? It could be at LinkedIn. It might be out there. You might be building the next new great car. Maybe it goes to Moon. Maybe it, you know, whatever. We expect you to do great things. Why? It's a handshake. You can't do amazing things if you, we don't help you become successful. You don't help the company become successful, we also can't set that part of the handshake. So it's a two-way street. Let's talk a little bit about our teams. We have two teams that we found are essential for the company over the, as we've evolved this. And it, it didn't start this way, but this is where we are now. The first team is the decision sciences team. This team is responsible for understanding the user usage, uh, reporting dashboards, A-B testings, insights. Uh, really, they're the ones that craft the strategic mission and frame the problems that we have to think about as a business. You've probably seen a fair amount of fun things that they've done. Uh, around insights. This is one that we did after the collapse of the financial sector. Where did everybody go? Everyone said, oh, they've all left. No, they haven't. They've gone there. <laughs> we know. <laughs> They're still lurking around. <laughs> but so what's also interesting on here is who's not on this graph. There's companies that didn't pick up people, and that's equally interesting. Doesn't stop there. This is a piece we did with the Wall Street Journal for the, the term ninja. So who's in, who's hot? Turns out ninjas, you're data scientist ninjas now. That's what you need to call yourselves. What shouldn't you call yourself? Guru's out. <laughs> Those of you with guru, start editing your profile. It's cool. But it doesn't stop there. Product. We're essentially a product-driven company. We are focused on taking our data and turning it into usable actionable insights for you. Back to our mission. Connect the world's professionals, help make them more successful and productive. How does that translate? Take some of the products. Here's our home page. You'll notice in this first slide, how many people have ever been, used people you may know and gone, whoa, how did they know that? Right? That product was actually invented at LinkedIn. Why? How many times you go to a party and you don't actually know anybody there? Right? Well, until you find somebody, then you go, oh, OK, I'm going to stick around. It's that same feeling in the virtual world. That's why we invented it. Ad targeting. There's also a great po product there that a, a lot of people like to look. Well, we know they love it. Is it's uh, who viewed my profile. And it gives you a lot of rich statistics, analytics, that helps you understand how your professional brand as you are being viewed and perceived in the world and who's looking at your storefront and th thinking about you as a brand. Not only that, but there's, we also can surface jobs. Uh, and we got a referral center. I think I saw Brady here earlier. Brady, don't worry. Uh, I'll recommend you for this job. Uh, <laughs> sorry, O'Reilly guys. <laughs> but uh, this is a great model of in this type of economy. Think about bring it back to the economy, which is there are lots of people out there who are stuck in job lock. And using the power of the network to unlock them is a very powerful thing. Some other things, you post a job on LinkedIn, we'll give you the 50 best matches. Career Explorer is something we launched late last year. It helps students and colleges figure out where they go. In this case, if I want to be a pilot, those are the people that can help me, the companies where pilots are being hired. And some of you may have seen this. Joe Adler did a bunch of this, uh, this email campaign. Uh, how many people got this email? How many people opened it? This email will go down in the history books as one having one of the highest open rates and click-throughs outside of an email without naked people. <laughs> Think about it for a second. Every one of you is getting this customized email with the right faces and really driving through high-level click-through. 
That combination uses a massive analytics tier with a really fantastic design team to combine it into a purely analytic-driven play. And people look at this and they go, what analytics? Everything about it is analytically driven. It's unbelievable how successful it's been. If you haven't been to our booth, I encourage you to come to our booth, check it out. We have this InMaps product of the network. It's a very powerful thing to be able to actually understand and interact with your network. And I've spoken a little bit about that. But we're here at Strata today. It's a data thing. We love that, right? It's finally about time we all got together and talked about data products. And one of the things that we wanted to do, what better place to launch a pro data product? And one of the things is, this is my network graph because I've decided it's just easier to carry it around with me. Uh, sometimes, you know, you just roll it up. I've got a pocket version. Uh, one of the things that you do if you've done this is you kind of play this game. You look at your different communities. And what do you see in your community? You go, oh, those are the guys with that. We shared that experience. Oh, those are the guys that worked with me on this. Take that one level deeper. What is that that's that, that shares that? It's experience. But it's also that you worked on similar things because you're like-minded professionals. Keep going with that. What is that? That's a skill. You have the same skills. And when we talk about skills and what that means, that's what we're here to launch today. And so today with that, uh, we are going to launch a new product. And it's LinkedIn Skills and Expertise. And right now, you can go ahead and hit this. But to get things going, I'm going to ask Pete Skarmarok to come up and walk you through uh, our latest data product. Hi, uh, I'm Pete Skamrock, data scientist at LinkedIn, and uh, I'm here to tell you about this new data product we're launching called uh, LinkedIn Skills and Expertise. Can you guys, can we got a mic? Hello? Hi, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm a data scientist at LinkedIn. So LinkedIn skills, uh, what we've done is we've extracted from the over 90 million member profiles uh, uh, the rich set of skills, the talent graph, if you will, of things like Hadoop, uh, iPhone, Android, Job, uh, what skills we have. So for the people in this room, we will we'll extract skills that you put on your profile and how you're connected to other individuals with that skill. Uh, what we've done now is, is for each of those skills, we've found the community uh, of people with that skill and surface relevant insights. So for example, you can type in, uh, I'm not wired here. Okay. Sorry guys, uh, Strata Wi-Fi, don't fail me now. <laughs> I take it some of you have similar issues. <laughs> OK. All right, we're back. OK. There we go. All right, we're back. So what are we looking at here? This is a skill page. Uh, in the center here, you see we, we surface uh, from Wikipedia a uh, relevant description about Hadoop. Uh, on the left rail, we have related skills that you might want to put on your profile or explore. Uh, for example, we have HBase, MapReduce, Dutch. Uh, on the right, you can explore the relative growth of Hadoop compared to HBase and Solar and see how many professionals have that skill. In the center pane, you can see we've surfaced relevant uh, professionals in the Hadoop community. Here's Doug Cutting. He's in attendance. Uh, Tom White wrote the O'Reilly book on Hadoop. Uh, Jacob, who just joined LinkedIn. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, and if you want to see yourself, just make sure that it's listed on your profile. Uh, related companies. We've surfaced a lot of related companies uh, who are here today. We've got the Apache Foundation, Yahoo. Uh, you can follow these companies and get relevant updates about employees at the company and company news. 
Uh, other things were surfacing. If you're a job seeker, you might want to check out uh, related Hadoop jobs, uh, see where, where they're hiring for Hadoop, where people are working. Uh, and you can network with other professionals using uh, LinkedIn groups. So uh, it's, it's actually the other thing, if you were at my talk, I think you, I had these graphs of the universe of skills and seeing how, how diverse the, our professional workforce really is. And I think that you can start to see that here. Um, if you just start searching around, there's, it's pretty rich. So you have things like ballet. Okay. And so there are all these ballet dancers on LinkedIn, apparently. Um, and it kind of makes sense, right? So they're in New York, and uh, they have dancing studios. Uh, you can also see uh, other, other things like wealth management. Uh, this is one of my personal favorites, weapons of mass destruction. If you want to search for them, they're on here, I guess. Uh, and uh, who, who do we have? You have Barack Obama. He, he, he was heavily involved in, uh, in uh, this in the Senate, I believe. Um, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency is on there as a company. Um, Arlington, you want to be in Virginia if you want to deal with this. So. Uh, but, you know, I, I encourage you all to go explore this and check it out. Um, you know, you can look for stuff that you might be interested in right now, other data stuff. It's at uh, linkedin.com slash skills. Thanks. I need to go back. Uh, actually, we just, we'll just wrap up. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, so where does that take us with skills and expertise? This is a graph that Pete was talking about, is uh, the giant cluster of, or the universe of all the skills. And some of the kind of crazy things that we'll, we'll hopefully find a way for Matthew and the guys to actually figure out a way to visualize this. But you can find all sorts of interesting groupings inside this of how skills are out there and how they're related. What really goes into this? What's the secret sauce to make a product like this happen? A lot of times we get asked, oh, wow, what technology you guys use? Hadoop, Voldemort, Mechanical Turk, armies of interns. Uh, what it comes down to, if there's one singular thing that we found time and time again is absolutely essential for every very data product is it hasn't been the technology. The technologies are the ingredients, but it's really, at the end of the day, it's the guys that do it. It's all of the people here. And that's why I think it's so great that everyone is here. Because it's the people that come together because nobody has exposed products like this. No one's been able to take all the data and interact with it in interesting ways. And it takes a new type of product manager, a new type of designer, a new type of web dev, a new type of QA, a new type of you know, everybody coming in engineering, everything coming together to understand how to actually make data products. And so one of the things I think at the, that I'd want to leave you with is building data products and carrying it all the way is essential about having the right team, making that a holistic team, and ensuring that you have an ethos of building fantastic data that is going to give utility for the user and provide value. Thank you.